Hello, my name is Monica Bednarek and I use Lawrence, Anthony's and Kong software in teaching corpus linguistics to students. So this is a little video demonstrating how to create concordances using and Kong software. For this little demonstration I assume that you have already loaded a corpus into the software. In my case this is a corpus consisting of 15 speeches that have been given by Barack Obama before the election. I also assume that you have already created a word list. Um, another video shows you how to do this. Interestingly, one thing to note with respect to concordances is that you can actually click on a particular item in the word list. It then takes you directly to the concordance list, the concordance line. For example, if I click on people, it comes up with all the concordances for people. However, another way in which I can do that is by simply um, typing in the particular word that I'm interested in. For example, American. So um, it then comes up with all occurrences of, of American in the corpus um, together with the co-text, the surrounding text. One thing that you can already see here is that this little window is quite interesting because it lets you see in how many different corpus files the word occurs. So if you can see here it occurs in um, quite a number of different text files. Um, that's important because it tells you something about dispersion. How dispersed is that particular item American that you're interested in? It, does it just occur in one of the corpus files or does it occur across the corpus files? And that's of course um, important because we want to know whether or not it's representative um, of the language variety rather than one particular file. Now actually the concordance plot itself is also really useful for this. So if I go on concordance plot um, what you can see is here that first of all it tells you um, how many files it occurs in. So here you can see if you scroll down it occurred in 15 different files. But it also um, tells you um, how often it then occurred in that specific file, here in that case 20 times, and where in that file it actually occurs. So that tells you something about textual progression, textual development. Now let's go back to the concordance. Um, what you see here is a, a just a normal um, unsorted concordance output. However, it's much more useful to sort this kind of output because it then makes it much easier to see patterns. And one thing with, that we will often want to do is to just sort alphabetically. Um, and you do this through the quick sort. So here um, you have to, of course, click um, the sort and if you want to sort it um, according to alphabetically according to what is um, to the right of the uh, search term, the node word, you just click 1R and you press sort and you can see then that it has been sorted here to the right. So you have the words starting with AND and A, a B, C, D and so on. Now if you want to um, actually sort according to the left you just change that to um, 1, 1L and here you go, then you can see, um, for example, African-American as um, a compound here. If you want to sort within the sort, so um, looking at all these examples for African-American, you still want to have these sorted alphabetically, for example, according to what comes to the right. You can do that through the second level. So here I then click um, 1R and you can see that this has been sorted again and it lets you to see even more patterns like business, community, history and so on. And you can play with that sorting. So um, instead, of, instead of sorting it according to 1R or 1L, you can sort it according to 2L, so positions 2 to the left of the node word, 3L um, and so on. You can change this around, which is quite useful. Um, the other thing is that also if you then click on this particular instance it, you can also get to the file view which tells you where, um, where it occurs in the text. So these are some of the basic ways in which you can use concordances and sorting.